Hi there. Uh, I had to change over to um, the right microphone. Uh, it, it automatically defaults to my um, to my uh, one that's set up with my headset. So anyway, uh, first of all, can you guys hear me okay? Hello, hello. Yes, no. Clyde, how you doing, man? BB Bruce, how's it going? Hey, yeah, uh, great. Okay, good. Um, Bruce, I, I want. Hi, Rich. <laughs> hey, there's the man with the watch. <laughs> uh, the um, Javier, how you doing? Jack, Jack o Jack. Hi, Airtoad, Clyde. Uh, the techno. Uh, tech audio file. I'm glad you're here, tech audio file. Um, talking with someone who gets tangled up in both. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, hi, Vegas. A um, couple things. Uh, today, what I wanted to talk about, I was, uh, what time is it? You know, it's, we have a minute to go. I don't want to say too much <laughs> before the official starting time. Uh, I could, well, I guess I got to wait for that too. Um, so, uh, so I can ask, uh, um, uh, Bruce, Bruce, you, you're going to get a, uh, uh, Zaza Lacoute, uh, and you were thinking between two different reversals. Is that right? Um, Okay, well, it's four o'clock. Um, the master ultra thin. Oh, that's right, the master. Yeah, ultra thin. I like that one too. Uh, it's. Um, I'm not mistaken. I think I'm trying to remember from the other day. Uh, doesn't the master ultra thin also have an exhibition window in the back plus a uh, plus it's an automatic? Is that right? Okay. Um, well, you can you can respond when you uh, when you like. Yep, that's it. Okay, that's a cool watch. Uh, I like thin watches. All right. Well, the one I've got on is my uh, resonance on this. Uh, what do I call it? Uh, Francois Paul Friday. That's for FP. Hey, Rudy. Um, now today, what I want to talk about was was a couple things, and, and I wanted to start with. Um, the publishing industry and what happened to it and the um and sort of discuss uh certain things they got the bird my man that's great richard <laughs> that's a cool watch i always did like that okay um let me get focused here the a, a while back uh not too long ago there was an article and it talked about Audemars Piguet is going to get rid of its ADs and have nothing but uh, Audemars Piguet boutiques, okay? However, uh, there's no way that I can see that they can either, that it would be a, any kind of business model where that's all they would have. And so I'm assuming that the rest is going to go online, okay? Now, uh, and when I was working on the uh, two videos for the uh, Zaza Lacoud, the I noticed, and, and they used not to have this, a couple different things that are happening. It's sort of creeping up on us. Uh, hi, Jay. Um, and that is, is that the, oh, you got your 5199 on, uh, Dex. Good watch. The, the thing that I've been noticing is that suddenly, the the watch manufacturers on their online presence are putting the prices okay now they didn't do that before and perhaps hey kaz how you doing at the the reason for that i'm not sure okay uh perhaps the idea was well if we don't put the price up here hi lawrence the uh low <laughs> Uh, the, if, if we don't put the prices here, people will go into our, uh, go to the ADs and they'll find out about the prices and they're more likely to buy a watch. Okay. Now, 
what happened in, in, I was involved in publishing for about 40 years from uh, 1970 uh, up to uh, 1974, I think, up to 2013 about. Okay, now what I saw happen over that period was just a massive changes, uh, massive in all kinds of ways, high tree. And what, what people said, oh, this is never gonna happen. And, and, it, and it did happen. Uh, early on, when I started uh, in publishing, I, I published with a uh, medium-sized publisher called Prager. And uh, the guy who was a publisher at the Prager at the time said, well, he said, here's what's going to happen in a few years. He said, there's going to be a sort of the middle size, the medium sized publisher is going to be wiped out. And they're either going to be these great big ones. And then they're going to be thousands of little ones. Uh, high one to free fall. The, the, what happened was that his, <laughs> his prediction was far better than I think he imagined. A couple of things happened. First of all, was the, hey, Clyde. Oh, he's talking to someone else, Clyde. <laughs> There's more than one bill. Uh, the, what happened was that the, uh, well, first, before the internet, the personal computer came along and then Apple came out with the, um, uh, laser printer sometime in the early eighties. And now the laser printer, suddenly what you had, you have typesetting going from sending it off to have typesetters do it. Somebody could do it on their computer, print out the camera ready copy on their laser printer and boom. And, and that was it. So, uh, yes, you know, so this was a big change because it didn't have to go. It was one step that they saved and also they saved quite a bit of money doing it that way now the, the next thing is has happened is with the internet hi kevin with the internet the the whole business model changed uh rather ironically and drastically with amazon and so they they the, what they did they took out the middleman and the price of the books went down uh, significantly because you're not paying for the uh, a lot of the stuff that goes on with the book, the shipping of the book, the warehousing and so forth. Everything was going to go to Amazon. They had these big warehouse. They kept things. And before you know it, there was no more Borders book. There was no more um, Barnes and Noble. I mean, I think we've got one left over in uh, West Hartford and that's it. I think there's another one out uh, out near Farmington, but and in these places don't mean anything to anybody except people in the neighborhood. Okay. Now, in, in looking at watches, we're, we're seeing the same thing happen. One thing that was, that I noticed about the, uh, Zaza Lacoutre, the exact same watches, brand new, were also being sold on Amazon for pretty much the same price. Okay. It wasn't a big discount that you usually see with Amazon because uh that was sort of interesting hi jay um is building big in saudi yeah I, he's building big everywhere and um a few years ago amazon asked me to be a, a vine reviewer and i've been working for them as a reviewer for i don't know how many years now but they that, that's been happening and i they send me stuff and i review it for them including watches and that's how come I, I can give away some really nice watches um, anyhow, the, the profit margin with watches is, can be fairly significant. I know that there was something like a hundred percent markup with, um, uh, Patek Philippe that go to their AD, they'd mark it up a hundred percent. And, uh, if they discounted it, uh, there'd be a big think about that and so forth. All right. Now. If we look at the the old models of doing business, um, th that doesn't fit with the new way of doing business. I mean, it, it, going to an AD and paying what amounts to 
like 20, 30, 40% more for a watch for the very same one you can go get from what, what they like to call the gray market. I like to call it the secondary market. I'll tell you why. Gray market assumes there's something shady about it. And, uh, but there couldn't be any shadier than some of the other ones. I don't think anyway. I mean, what, the ADs, um, the A, I, I've worked with ADs and they, They've been okay. I mean, they've been fine. Uh, and I worked with people who I've been saying, oh, you know, you got to watch out for those people. Uh, that's worked out for me too. And so it, it's like if, if I were selling, uh, let's say, uh, Rolex or if I were selling Patek Philippe and I was basically making the same amount let's say i sell a twenty thousand dollar watch and i keep ten thousand and the other ten thousand goes back to paddock for week okay that's a that's a great business for me all right and if but it only works if i'm the only guy who can, can get my hands on it now here's here's some of the the other developments you say well you can all, always buy uh used okay uh hi richard a um and in that way, there's, you know, from the great, what, what they call the gray market, I'll, I'll say the pre-owned market. But, but, but things have been, been changing pretty quickly. First of all, things like Chrono 24, you can get new, used, whatever, all right, online. And you can negotiate. You can negotiate with them. I, I haven't bought a watch through Chrono 24 that I haven't negotiated. Um, Sometimes I can negotiate down to half of what they were asking originally. So there's, there's a lot of room to negotiate on a, you, you can't do that with, well, I mean, you can do it to some extent with an AD, especially if you have a history of business with them on certain watches. You can't do that though on other ones that are con totally controlled by the manufacturer in terms of pricing and so forth. As this begins to break down, and you have this, you don't have a local market anymore. You've got an international market. Uh, for a few years, I, I did some publishing myself. And um, I, I learned <laughs> you know, shipping books outside of the United States. Uh, they were going all over the world. Um, okay. So... So what's going to happen with watches, right? Is it going to be, I mean, is it going to be enough pressure on Rolex that these other places start having better prices, better selection, uh, better everything than you can get in your local store? Because your local store is only going to handle so much. Uh, in certain markets, like if your local store happens to be in New York City, that's different. If you've ever been to the uh, Cartier store uh, in New York City, for example, that's huge. I mean, it's sort of like going to a Costco and there's nothing but these these uh, Cartier watches. Um, but if you go online, you can find just about any Cartier that they're going to have in that big New York uh, boutique of, uh, for Cartier. Now, uh, hi Kyle. Okay. And, and so, so this is sort of something I wanted to ask you guys about what you think about it and, um, your comments on it. Hi, William. Uh, what you think? Okay, so let's take Rolex and Patek Philippe. And the reason I want to talk about Rolex and Patek Philippe is that they have the most control, okay? Rudy, uh, AP is pulling out of SIHH, and AP are going to start selling secondhand AP. Ah, okay, now that's new. I didn't know that. That's another thing that I noticed. If you go to Amazon.com, and I would go there, or I don't think I bought a high horology watch from there, and I say yet. Uh, but they, I noticed that with the Zsa Zsa Lakutra, they had both new and used. 
Uh, so now you have, I mean, this is, you, you know, it's like, you know, shortly there'll be a time that we'll remember before Amazon owned the, the whole world. Uh, they're doing to do it to stop the gray market. Uh, the gray market, that'll be interesting. Uh, what's going to happen to the gray market? The gray market, the thing about the gray market, the gray market responds on a, just they'll turn on a dime. Whereas these big companies, they're, they've got this business model that turns like a very slow dinosaur. <laughs> um, no, I don't have a sweater vest over a sweater. This is a style. Good grief. Kyle, <laughs> what? Not a sweater vest. This is the way it's made. Um, anyway, uh, and hi, we had a lot of snow last night. It's, it's getting, it's winter here now. Okay. Um, Mender, belt and suspenders. Okay. All right. Let me see. Um, rhubarb, let me see. Thank you. Yes. Uh, uh, rhubarb pie. Yes. Uh, something like that. I think it's going to happen. Uh, Kyle, you like the gray market. I do too. I, <laughs> you know, I, I don't call it the gray market, Kyle. I call it the secondary market. You know, he, here's the thing is, is that, you know, I know some ADs and I, I don't want to see them die. We'll put it that way. But that, but things have got to change because if they don't, that's what's going to happen. Going back 40, 50 years ago now, when I, I talked to that publisher, he said, well, there's going to be a lot, all, all of these little small ones, uh, the hardly any middle size, and then just a few of these giant ones. Well, that's pretty much, it, it's happened, but not exactly in the same way. Publishers have been consolidating like mad, um, over the years, but the marketing of it has changed and so suddenly there's more opportunities for these little bitty guys there never used to be it was something like 90 percent of all the book publishing was done by these little little bitty publishers and the uh places like barnes and noble only bought from the top two percent so that's the same thing with this but there's i actually with watches there's a great deal more variety now when you bring in these big groups like richmond and um louis vuitton and hennessy and some of these other ones and then you're looking at a smaller one Taz, i bought a watches from gray market and didn't have any issues at all yeah i i i tell you i i bought from both in fact one i did have uh, problems with, and this was an AD, and I sent it back to the AD, and they fixed it and sent it right back to me. So that was that was a good experience. I haven't had that with what are considered really gray markets. Uh, Tudor from Watchmax, no problems at all. Watchmax is a place I haven't bought from, but I do know they have good prices. Um, and uh, same with uh, Joma Shop. I say ten thousand dollars on Joma uh, uh, on a watch. I bought at Joma Shop. Why? Sh <laughs> like that's a lot of money. Um, this was during the Asian crisis, and all kinds of things were going crazy. And uh, so I was able to get a watch that I really liked, and it was ten thousand dollars under what they were asking for uh, at the AD. And just you know, it just it's it, it's nuts. There's something else too that's sort of interesting is that uh, if you go to New York City and buy a watch, uh, you're going to pay 8.5%, I think, 8.5% New York City, state of New York <laughs> taxes on it. All right, so that, that, that's getting up there. That's close to a 10% tax on a $2,000 watch. A $2,000, we, we don't have, let's say on a $20,000 watch. Um, that's close to $2,000. All right. Now, if you buy it online, uh, and you, you get a, a $2,000, a $20,000 watch, you're not going to have that. Rick, you haven't had any problem with gray markets. This is the thing is that I think the people who, 
that's why I call them secondary markets. Gray markets is one of those terms that the ADs like to use, like it's gray, there's something wrong with it. Well, there really isn't. Hi, Michael. And watch Max often uh, offer, have great prices. Amazon usually has bad prices, and I like to watch this from them. Um, yes, uh, those are good points, uh, Michael. The, um, the thing about Amazon, though, that things are changing. We'll see what happens with them because Amazon has got to compete against Joma Shop and Max Watches and some places like that. And now, but what you're seeing, I think this transition, at least I see it with uh, Zaza Lacouk, is that they're, they're, they're pretty much the same prices. Graham, you should try living in the UK, sales tax 20%. I know that isn't that what they call VAT. Um, I if I buy a watch from Europe or Switzerland, I don't have to pay the VAT, and and I have bought watches from there, no VAT. And as yet, uh, customs hasn't hit me up, and I'm I'm always surprised. The U.S. customs for watches is like something like it's 1.5 percent, something really not very much at all. And, uh, but I, they never charged me that. I don't know. Maybe I'll get a bill someday. <laughs> but yeah. Um, how is your free health care? Oh, Kyle, come on now. No, nothing political. Okay. Please just keep it out. All right. Um, okay. A lot from Govberg. Yeah. Now, Govberg, I had really good experience with them. Two things about Govberg I liked. One is that they do negotiate. Second of all, the um, they take care of business for you if something goes wrong. That was I, I mentioned that was an AD. They are an AD on a lot of watches, and I and I bought one from them. I didn't have that thing a week, and it just dropped dead on me. Sent it back. They fixed it up. Haven't had a problem with it since. So yeah, Gubberg is uh, they've got a good reputation. They've got a great selection of watches. I've had great experience with them. Now, I, I don't, they, they have both new and used, and I know that they're ADs for a lot of different brands. So, you know, it, it's, uh, they're, they're people I don't mind uh, dealing with. Usually I can get a better price somewhere else. So, so okay, so let's, let's go back to uh, looking at uh, Rolex and Patek Philippe. Are they going, uh, do you want to shut up? Don't give you papers. No, they don't, Rudy. Uh, I, <laughs> that I can testify, but you get the box. Uh, the, um, going back to Patek Philippe and going back to, uh, Rolex. Okay. Now they, the, both of those have a reputation for maintaining their prices. So if you buy a Rolex, um, and you, and you sell it, you're going to get pretty close back what you what you bought it for. Um, I and the same thing with Patek Philippe. The Patek Philippe that I have um, been doing fine. Hi Joe, invest in Tudor. Tudor's a nice watch too. Herman Ingram. Hello Herman. Um, the okay. Uh, so, okay, so what, come on, you guys, some of you have Rolexes, isn't there any, isn't there a Rolex person here? Anybody, Rolex or Patek Philippe person? Somebody? Uh, Tudor will be worth more than, oh, yeah, I know, I know that, but I mean, here's the whole thing, Joe, or is it Joseph or Joe? Yeah, there it is. Uh, Clyde, that you're the guy I was hoping that would come up with it. Will Rolex be able to maintain that? I mean, if, if, uh, you have certain companies that don't have a marketing plan like Parmigiani and I've taken advantage of that. Um, uh, and, but the marketing plan that Rolex and Patek Philippe have gives them total control, but that control seems to be shifting more and more. And, the, I mean, the, everything is going online almost. I trying to think. I was in a, I was in New York City for the um, uh, uh, watch time show, and we went into a a real bookstore with books and stuff, and that was a lot of fun. I mean, I, was, I haven't done that in years uh, because that costs too much, 
And so, sort of interesting, no AD shield, Rolex from healing supply and demand directly. Yeah, uh, if they can control that, I see, here's the thing that may happen, Clyde, and I don't know. I mean, I've seen it happen in other areas, is that things that you think this sort of that are bedrock, suddenly they're not bedrock anymore. They're, poof, they're gone. And I've seen that happen. Now, the area I saw it in was publishing some very storied publishing houses just all of a sudden weren't there anymore. And their change was very slow. It was way too slow. Um, okay, let's see. Technophile. Hey, Technophile, what's up? I know Paddock, H-A-Y-E, hey, hate, Rolex, I don't, maybe. Um, I, you probably know, you have both. Um, I have yet, I'm going to get a Rolex soon though, I, I hope. I hope to get that uh, Cellini print. All right, uh, let's see. Okay. All right, any other, any other thoughts about that? Hey, Simon. Um, hey, Rich in San Diego. Uh, San Diego is my old stomping ground. I love San Diego. Oh, right. why? Well, thank you, Kyle. Um, Paddock is complacent. Herman, I think you're right. I talked to a hey Jesse, I, I or Jersey. Uh, I talked to a guy uh, who's a world-class watchmaker, and he felt the same thing about Paddock. He said they used to have the, do these great things, and he said they sort of stopped doing that. Uh, I doesn't mean I don't like Paddock to leave watches. I do. Clyde, you're right. Rolex doesn't care. <laughs> Rolex has what I call the unloved children. Rolex owners or a certain subset of Rolex owners are totally loyal to um, to Rolex, and, and they get treated like Cinderella <laughs> by the mean stepmother. It's you know like <laughs> you know it, it, they're they're terribly mistreated, and they go along with it, and then they have these. What do they call them uh, when they overcharge for something? A premium. That's the word they use. Premium. <laughs> so we're going to turn out the same old Rolexes and the, you know, nothing too earth shaking because we don't want to shake our user base. And they're faithful. I mean, they're like dogs. They get kicked and they keep, you know, <laughs> give me more. There was, a, I, don't, I don't know if, there was a movie that was made a number of years ago called Little Shop of Horrors. And um, in that movie, Steve Martin plays this crazy dentist and Bill Murray plays this masochistic patient, okay? And that's what he just, he's in there doing all of these terrible things to him. And Bill Murray just loves it. And I think, oh, those, those are, that's a protect odor. They take not a Patek, but a Rolex owner. They get kicked around. They do. Rolex, uh, at least I've been treated uh, by Patek very well. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> I don't, if I get my Cellini print, I don't think they'll care one way or the other because they don't make them anymore. Okay. Uh, re uh, retains and gains a value like, yes, they do. Uh, Michael, you're absolutely right. Are going to sell what? Paddock are going to sell the company. You think they are, Rudy? Rolex cares about tennis players. Herman, you're right. Well, that, this is I, I. I saw a picture of some actors I actually like, and they had these watches that. <laughs> oh boy, you know who you've been talking to? You, you got something. You got a watch that they sold you for, you know, thousands and thousands more. Uh, that they deserve, and yet they got a cheap movement in it. 
Uh, you like F.P. Jorn. Uh, oh, yeah, that's kind of great, F.P. Jorn. Those things, I like those watches, too, and I don't want to go into what I like because um, I can't afford what I like. Vegas. Uh, listen, love the Rolex at least. Let them hate me. People pity the weak. I don't, I don't know what that means, but Vegas. I... Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what you mean by that. Rolex should treat its owners better, because uh, I, you know, they. But the thing is, they don't complain about it. They, they, Rolex owners actually is like, well, I should be treated this way. <laughs> but the watches themselves, they make these really good watches. Um. Okay, wait, wait, wait. No, really, Vegas. I, I, I I'm not that smart. Um, <laughs> was some Rolex and some Patek hold their increased value. Many models uh, both lose value or others. Try reselling the uh, Calatrava. Uh, the Calatrava, I've got, I've seen at least they're asking a lot more than I ever paid for mine. So, you know, I, I think there's some vintage ones. I'm not criticizing Rolex a watch because I, I do think Rolex makes a good solid watch. Period. Okay. Um, the the thing about it is that, and, and this comes from Clyde. Clyde goes on about, oh, they do this to me and they do that to me. <laughs> like, okay. I thought I think Rolex owners ought to be treated better. Okay. So. Vegas, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about anything. I'm not bad mouthing uh, Rolex. <laughs> the inflated gray market. Okay. Um, <laughs> quite. Okay. I also had to buy my Rolex uh, Batman gray market. Uh, that one hurt a bit. I could feel the Rolex hype in my wallet. Okay. <laughs> Vegas. Yeah, you, you can't have a. I tell you, one of the things is that there's any watch. <laughs> okay, Clyde, that makes sense. Um, yeah, you know the thing is, is that I I was um, I I got this this there's a place called Lux Bond and Green. It's sort of a high-end jewelry store in our area. And they carry Patek Philippe, but they also carry some lesser lights. And it, it, it's sort of interesting. They have Patek Philippe, they have Rolex, and I don't think they have anything else that is particularly interesting, at least to me. Um, okay, no one's going to pay above retail. Way to go, guys. <laughs> Wouldn't want that. Um, it, you know, if somebody pays above or below or somewhere with relative to retail, it's in terms of what they really want. And, and this is what's un unfortunate. I think Rolex is, it's, they're, not, they're not doing well because they're dumb. They're not. Uh, but they have a certain subculture of Rolex buyers who seem to do what they want them to do, okay? All right, uh, is the AP Offshore Diver Boutique a decent watch for 14.5? Uh, Rudy, if Rudy is still around, he would know that better than anyone. Um, I I don't know AP that well. I had one and I, I uh, traded it in. Uh, Rudy on Rolex is a brand more than great watches now. Uh, Rudy, totally agree. Rolex equal moo crowd. <laughs> no, don't call him that, John. <laughs> I think we're all moo crowds in that respect for what what I paid for some watches is sort of nuts. But, you know, how, how will this hold up? Um. Where's Rudy? Rudy, did you take off? Um, anyway, uh, Rudy really knows the um, 
auto RP gate. And like I said, I had one. It it was it just wasn't a watch I ended up liking. I, I, I haven't had that too much. It was a great watch, but it just wasn't great in the way I needed it to be great and ended up on a trade in. Um, IWC. You want my opinion of IWC? IWC needs to get honest. That's if uh, I think IWC has had some some very good watches, but they but they put in an ETA movement and and they call it IWC. I don't like any watch company that still does that because most watch companies are coming around. They're realizing that uh, watch buyers aren't as clueless as they used to be, and so you know if if an IWC has a Salida, it's got an ETA or whatever's got in it. I don't know. Oh, rap. I forgot to, uh, my robo call. Let me see if it's good. Uh, there. I hung up. Forgot that. Okay. Uh, IWC needs intervention. <laughs> yeah. It's something like that. I, I would buy a watch. In fact, there's one I like a lot uh, by uh, Tissot. It's a new one they just came out with last September, I think. And they have a in the back you can see it. It's uh, ETA 6498, I think. And it's a cool looking watch. Uh, it's like it's under two thousand dollars. You're getting what you pay for. When a watch company gives, and this includes Omega, it includes Cartier, it includes any one of them that, that do that, they're not telling the truth. Period. Now they can say, oh, well, you shouldn't say that about us because we're, you know, blah, 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 blah. We've done this and we've done that to the, uh, to the movement. Okay. So tell us what it is. If you've done something to the movement, if you, if you take, cause I like ETA movements. I, I really do. I'm, I even like, uh, the clones by a seagull. The thing of it is, is that just say something to the effect. Okay. Yes, we put an ETA in it, and here's what we did with it. Okay, not a problem. That's fine. Okay, so now I know what I'm buying. Uh, and, and so when people pay, let's say, $5,000 for a Panerai, and it's got an ETA in it, but it says it's a, a QT1 or a QP1, something like that. they got a whole other set of – That's to me, that's, uh, that's misrepresentation. Uh, Clyde told me what, what, the, what the legal word was. I forgot what it was. <laughs> Once, I, I guess you're not supposed to call it flat out fraud. So I will not call that behavior fraud. Okay. I, I have to call it something else, misrepresentation or something like that. But I mean, it, it, I don't know why. Now, on the other hand, IWC has some of their own movements that are pretty good, okay? Not a problem. Now, what Nomos did, Nomos did something very interesting. Uh, the Nomos Alpha is an ETA, uh, pay, well, it used to be called Peizu 7001, okay? And they took it and they built one themselves from scratch and they called it the Alpha, all right? And the, I think... They had enough integrity not to say too much about it. In fact, I don't even know if there's any place in the Nomos ad that they call it in-house. They just call it the alpha that they put together themselves. Where on the other hand, the DUW, they're very much uh, in-house by Nomos. Um, that's the only thing. Okay, yes, that is the BS that IWC says about Retrofitted 7750 Valjus. Yeah, and the 7750 Valjus, it's a good movement. This is the whole thing. It says, look, okay, so we, so, so what are you buying? Hang on a second. Let me show you what I got here. Okay. Here's a watch I, I, I made. Okay. It's got a big fat case. It, it's, man, it's light. It's hard to get it. Can't see it in the light. Okay. That's, uh, an ETA, um, 6497. All right. And here's a watch. And, okay. 
and I got this thing timed uh, to less than a second error. All right, that's what I got. Now, I think I paid maybe $100, $110 to put the whole thing together, and this includes the band, all right? The band is a leather band with a gator pattern to it, all right? When I, when I do that, it, it tells me what I need to know and gives me a very clear idea of what they're up to at places like IWC, Cartier, and any place else that uses relatively inexpensive movement. It, and then, like I said, they say, well, we've done this and that to it. Okay, fine. That, that's, I'm glad to hear that. Tell me what it is. And, and some of them have. They'll put in a, some kind of module or something to make it do some kind of trick. Um, try to think. Oh, here's a good example of one. Let me see if I can. I think it's uh, Ward. Christopher Ward has a regulator, and the regulator has a sixty, an ETA sixty four ninety eight in it, and they made it a regulator. And what they did, they moved the hour hand to the top, uh, and so they had to do some modification to it. So that the hour hand uh, was separate from the minute hand. That's the thing about a regulator. They're all on their own subdial. So that's what they said. I love Christopher Ward for doing that. I, I, if, so if I buy it, I know what I'm getting, and I'm not paying that much. Okay. Now I don't think I'm gonna, you know, you know, <laughs> set up an inheritance <laughs> thing like Pedic uh, Philippe claims to do. But, you know, uh, at, at least I know what I have. Okay. Let's see what you guys are saying. I'm talking way too much. Kyle, LOL, uh, Clyde's message got zapped. Hi, Haja. Nice to see you, too. Jerry, okay. Michael. Hi, Michael. Uh, let's see. Now, Michael knows how to cuss like a pen, and I've never heard that before. <laughs> Kerry Wood and Lana didn't speak that way, Michael. <laughs> that was funny. Okay. Uh, well, let's see. Oh, my goodness. Uh, how am I doing on time? Okay. I'm, I'm over my uh, time. Out. Will the ADs be gone? No. Okay. Michael, why do you say they're old? the ADs will be around still when we have to pay a great deal more for an AD than without an AD? And like, like I said, you know, by 2024, there aren't going to be more Audemars Piguet ADs according to Audemars Piguet, not according to me. Um, see what else you got? Deceptive. That's the term, uh, Clyde. Thank you. Um, it's deceptive, not misleading. Use the right legal term there for it. Hi, Nelson. Jersey. Okay, well, guys, listen. Um, okay, Rasher. Hi, Rasher. I missed you the first time. Uh, handling it over in house is much to do about nothing, in my opinion. I care. In these Okay, uh, now, Rasher, see, here's the problem. I, it, 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 you got a good point. I mean, if, if you take take the top of the line ETA movement, all right, and uh, have it have it uh, adjusted, okay, to, to six uh, six adjustment angle, that's fine. Okay, so what you do, you say, okay, we have uh, an ETA seventy seven fifty. We put in this watch. We got the very best one, and we added this module to it. All they gotta say. So I know what I'm getting. I know what I'm paying for. We're collectors. We're the guys that have the money that we gotta buy this stuff. And I don't see why people put up with what amounts to deception. I, I, there's no reason for it. Um, I, I I don't know how many other businesses are are this way. I mean that they have. I mean if you went and you bought a um, a new car, let's say you went out and you bought a Mercedes. And it's got a Yugo engine in it. And I say, hey, it's a really good Yugo engine, but, and we're going to call it a Mercedes engine. 
you might say, oh, wait a minute. Okay, 80s protect Rolex. Uh, Clyde, that's a good point. Uh, th that's one th reason they may, they may keep it, if they can keep it. I mean, if people don't change their mind, it depends on the brand. It is part of the luxury experience of some brands, the feeling of great service. That's one of the problems, Michael, we've been talking about. There isn't great service. It's, and this is one of the things, and again, that Rolex owners, they don't complain about it. They take it, they take it on the chin like they somehow deserve it. Uh, that is not good service. Okay, Bill, uh, Rolex could change whatever they want in this market. Thank you, Rolex. Thank God for AD. <laughs> That's sort of like when I say beat me, kick me, <laughs> call me, call my watches Orient. I, I'll take any kind of abuse. All right, there's one reason why Rolex would go, uh, would do away with AD because they want the satisfaction of time and disappointing us directly. I, that would be something that they're missing. You know, this is the funny thing. Rolex, on the other hand, there's, they have, they do such good things. <laughs> All of their money goes to, they, they don't, they don't take their money and somebody gets super rich off of it, but they have all of these projects. They give it all away. That's what, <laughs> to me, that's the best thing that Rolex does. So, you know, with, with the guys that get their, you know, get kicked around the block and love it for Rolex. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, okay, Austin Martin uses Mercedes engines in some models. Yeah, but I mean, you take a, yeah, okay, that's the same thing that, uh, like you have um, uh, Audemars, um, uh, Zazar Lacoute movements, uh, a lot of different watch companies have used them. Patek Philippe used them at one time. Audemars Piguet's used them. Vesteron Constantin. But that's, what you're doing, there's a difference between putting top movements into top watches and charging top prices. Like, for example, if I get a watch and they say, oh, this has got a Vosher in it, whoa, boy, that I will take over a lot of in-house movements because Vosher has really excellent movement. On the other hand, if if I don't know what kind of movement they have or they fancy it up with some stupid mm -hmm. name, Oh, you know, uh, Bruce, you're talking about buying a um, uh, Zaza Le Coutre. You don't have to worry about them. You know, if you buy a Zaza Le Coutre, you're getting a good in-house movement. Uh, the same is true with, with Rolex. Okay, uh, AP makes movements for RM. Yeah. Uh, Rudy, uh, I oh, see. Now, what was I going to ask you, Rudy? We had talked about it earlier. I forget what it was. Agenhor makes movements for, ah, Agenhor makes movements for the singer Reimagined, which uh, won a um, uh, Grand Prix award this uh, this past one. Uh, Agenhor also in my uh, my little um, Harry Winston that has a Gerard Perigo movement, the uh, retrograde was made by Agenhor. And the way I found out, was that I wrote to Agenhor and, they, and the uh, Vita Rex son who works there wrote back. We had a correspondence over it, and he sent me the blueprints for the uh, for the module that Agenhor made. Uh, let's see. About the, oh, that was it about the offshore uh, uh, diver uh, Rudy. Uh, Clyde was interested. I think it was at fourteen thousand five. For uh, the offshore shore driver, whether uh, diver, whether you thought that was a good deal or not, so that was what the question was about. I don't know to own a stake up. <laughs> Does that like races make sure they have one black grip? Oh, why? We've had a what a strange analogy. Um, I do have a Raymond Weil. I don't know if that counts or not. 
Um, okay. Uh, well, look, guys. Um, look, we're 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 not. Okay, Clyde, you're not a what snob. You own a Seiko. I don't own a, a Seiko, but I'm not a what snob. And I'm not a what snob because I have a FP Jorn, all right? You can't get more humble than FP. Oh, Joseph, please, okay? We, we're leaving politics out of here. We, all right? of all kinds. I don't care if you're for Trump, against Trump, or you're a wog mom. Just no politics. Yes, watch talk. Yes, yes it is. Uh, we, we don't need that crap. Uh, we really don't. Okay, um, so everybody, uh, Sunday, I'm going to have, I'm a Trump fan, okay, not, not a Trump fan, I didn't mean Trump, I'm not a Trump fan, I'm a Clyde fan, how's that, I like Clyde, uh, I mean, how can you not like somebody from Oklahoma, I, I, I sort of implied that at one of my things that Oklahoma <laughs> needed a, some kind of no, it's not okay to say, let's just leave politicians out there. I don't like any politicians, to be honest. I don't, I, I think you have to be somewhat of a snake to be a politician, any politician. I don't care what kind. All right. So, so I, I don't want to hear about politicians at all. That's how come I collect watches and not politicians. All right. If I, if I were rich enough, I could collect them. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes. Yes, Russia. Thank you. Joe, really, don't do that, Joe. Okay. Politics, sexual matters, religion. Uh, where are you? What, what happened to that? That message got retracted. <laughs> I don't know what you said, Michael, but it was retracted automatically. <laughs> these things have, there's sort of the artificial intelligence on these things isn't what it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, she was a yes, she had a Rolex. Okay, you can say that. All right? That's enough. Um Right, there you go. Keep politics out of watches, but watches on politicians. I think if 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 politicians spent more time thinking about their watches, maybe we wouldn't have as many things go wrong. All right. Gotta go. Uh, this went on pretty long. Uh, you guys are great. And uh, Sunday, uh, I'm going to have the second half of the um, I, I hesitate on that because Rudy told me how to say it correctly. <laughs> I keep goofing it up. Take care.